all right guys welcome back to the second video of this kiwi md series so in the last video we created an empty window by first importing this md app from kiwi that is importing this application functionality from kiwi md and then we created our class of our application and then we inherited all this md app functionality inside our demo app class and then we created this build method to build our application and then we just returned nothing because we just wanted an empty window and then we ran the application so in this video what we are going to do is we are going to add some text inside our application and they're also known as labels and before we get started with our coding part I just have to remind you that all the code is available on github.com slash athreyabhat slash kvmd-basics and you can come to the second video lecture that is the labels folder and over here you can see all the notes which has all the relevant URLs and you can also see the code in main.py file. But anyways, to come back to our code, first we need to create or import our labels from kvmd. So we're just going to write from kv.md and we are going to import from UIX. This contains all the user interface functionalities like buttons and all the other elements that are required. So we also need labels. So I'm just going to import this label functionality and we are going to import this capital L label from our UIX dot label. And then we need to add this inside our app. So what we are going to do is we're inside this def build method. We're just going to create a variable. You can just call it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it label. And then we are going to use the label functionality that we just imported. And then it requires a parameter of text as to what text to show on the screen. So we're going to give it a text inside single quotes. I'm just going to call it hello world for right now, because this is the first thing we do whenever we create a new program. And then I'm just going to return this label on our screen. So now let's run it and see if our text is being shown on our window. So you can see that there is no text currently over here because label is a functionality of Kiwi and not Kiwi MD. If you want to add a label inside Kiwi MD, we first need to add this MD parameter over here. As you can see, it has two items of MD icon and MD label and we need this MD label. So what we are going to do is we are just going to copy this and instead of label, we are just going to add an empty label over here and it stands for material design label. So our label is going to look a little better than the default label of Kiwi. And now you can see that this hello world has appeared over here, but it's not appearing in the center of the screen. So Kiwi MD has this parameter, this useful parameter of H align or horizontal align. So we're just going to type H align equals to center, and this will make sure that our text goes to the center. So now let's reload it and you'll be able to see that our text is in the center right now. Now, how do you change the color of this text? So because right now it's just in black in color. So there are something known as theme colors inside KVMD. So for example, if I go over here and click on this MD label theme text color, you can see that there are various colors over here. So one is primary, secondary, hint, and then there is this error, which is red in color. So these have different kind of opacities or transparencies in each of these colors. So let's go with this error color because it's the most different one. So to apply this theme color, what we are going to do is inside our code, we are just going to add a parameter of theme and underscore text color. And then we are just going to name it the color that we want or the theme color that we want. So as you can see, there are four theme colors over here, the primary, the secondary hint and error. So we are going to go with this error. So we are just going to copy this error and paste it inside our code. So inside single quotes, we are just going to write error. And now let's reload it and see if our color goes to a red kind of a color. So we can see that it gives us an error because this T should be in small. So let's make sure that it's correct. And now let's reload it and you'll be able to see that our color is in red. So why is this error color in red? Because whenever we're in our application, we are going to show an error. It's obviously going to be in red, but obviously you can use this in different ways. So now let's try another color. For example, let's try a secondary, which is a little bit more transparent, but it's still in black color. So let's make sure we don't make any more spelling mistakes and reload it. And you'll be able to see that's a little bit transparent, but still it's in black color. So now the next thing is how do we add custom colors to it? Because we are limited by these four hint colors over here or the four theme colors over here, but we want to add some custom colors like whatever color we want. So what we are going to do is instead of this secondary parameter, we are going to or argument we are going to give it is just this custom and then we can apply our own color to it. So for example, over here, we are just going to write custom and then we are going to give it a text color of uh, text underscore color. And then this is a tuple, so it requires some values. So we're going to put in our parenthesis over here and then it requires four values that are the RGB values and then the opacity or the transparency value. And this RGB is basically red, green and blue. 
So let's say we want our text to be red and because we have already covered red. So let's say our color of text we want to be is green. So we are going to give it RGB value. We don't want the red color that is the R. So we're going to give it a value of zero. Then G stands for green. We want the green color. So we are going to give it a value of one and then blue we don't want. So we are going to give it a value of zero and then we want to show it on the screen. So we are going to give it a value of one. So now let's reload it and the text should change to a green color as you can see over here. Now let's try and change this to a blue color. So red again, we don't want green. We don't want and we want the blue color. So let's change it to blue and let's reload it and this should give you a blue color. Now obviously we don't want to be limited to just red, green and blue. What if we want some kind of a random color? So this is the RGB value. So what you can do is you can just Google RGB and just go to any link. I'm just going to the W3 schools link and over here you can see there is this RGB calculator. So for example, if you just want the green color, you can see that the RGB values are 0 to 55 and 0. So any of these values can range from 0 to 255, but in our KVMD, it only allows us to give a value from 0 to 1. So what we can do is instead of uh, writing 255, we can divide this 255 by 255 and this will give us a value of 1 which we put over here for the green color. So now let's say we wanted a random color in W3 schools. So let's uh, increase our red value, maybe decrease our uh, green color and increase our maybe like our blue color a little bit. So you can see we have this pinkish color over here or like a skin color over here. So now you can see we have the RGB values over here. Now how do we put these RGB values inside our code? So what we are going to do is we are going to divide all of these three values by 255.0 because we want it to be a float value between 0 to 1. So we are just going to copy and paste this uh, for all of the three values. So we're going to just copy and paste them. So let's put a 0 over here also and we're going to copy this also and paste this in blue. So what we're going to do now is replace the zero and zero and this one with our RGB values. So let's go back and the first value is 236. So we're just going to copy this and paste this over here. It's pretty simple. Then we're going to copy this 98 from here and copy and paste this over here instead of this, uh, this green value. And then last value of blue, we're just going to copy this and paste this instead of one. So now let's uh, format everything properly so that everything is looking nice and proper and let's reload it and it should give us a peach kind of a color as you can see over here. Now that we have covered everything about colors, let's discuss font styles. So for example, what if we wanted to make a like a title or a big text over here or what if we wanted to like make it italics and give it a different kind of font style. So QEMT has this parameter of font style. So what we can do is we can just put a comma over here in the next line. We can use this value of font underscore style and then put a font style over here. So what kind of font style are available in KVMD? For this, you can go to just this one. And all of these links are available in this notes.txt. So for example, this is the style we are talking about. So you can just copy and paste this in your browser and you will get this GIF. So you can see we have different kind of titles and styles available over here. So let's try this H1 style. So for example, we can go over here and just type in H1 and reload it and you'll be able to see that that our text suddenly became very, very big. So for example, if we try H2, let's try a heading that's a little bit smaller. So you can be able to see that we have a heading, but it's a little bit smaller. So now let's try out something like caption. So for example, if we have an image and we want to display a caption, we can use this caption style. So let's make sure that the C is in capital and we can just write caption over here and let's reload it and you'll be able to see that it appears in very small letters. So basically we are just copying this uh, first H5, H6, subtitle 2 and we're just pasting that in font underscore style. And now the last thing we want to cover is MD icon. So what if we instead of the text we wanted to display an icon. So icon is also a part of this label so I just wanted to cover over here. So instead of just importing this MD label we can also import this MD icon from here. And then what we can do is we can create a, a new variable called icon label and we're going to give it a value of MD icons. We are going to use this MD icon functionality and inside this it requires an icon parameter. So we're just going to give it an icon value. So let's write icon and then how do we get the value of icons or what kind of icons are available inside KVMD. So for that we can just go to this last link that is MD icons and it will give you this code. So what you can do is you can just scroll down a little bit and these are all the icons that are available to us. For my favorite is uh, this Python one. So for example, I don't know why I'm printing this out, but I want the Python one. So I'm just going to copy and uh, search for Python. So let's search for it a little bit down. 
So you can see that there is this icon of language Python. So I'm just gonna copy this from here and paste this over here. And we're also gonna align it to the center of the screen. So we are just gonna write HLine equals to center. And then what we are gonna do is instead of returning the label, we are gonna return this icon label on our screen. So now let's reload it and you'll be able to see that we have our uh, Python label inside our screen over here. Now let's try out some different icons. So for example, let's try out, um, I don't know what this library video is, but it looks interesting. So let's just copy and paste this over here instead of language Python and let's reload it. And you'll be able to see that a new icon has appeared over here. All right, it looks kind of like YouTube icon. Um, all right, guys, this was pretty much it for this video. I know this was a lot of information, but it covered everything that you needed to know about labels and adding text and changing colors on the screen. In the next video, we are gonna learn about buttons and how to edit them and how to create like beautiful buttons that you have seen on Android application and iOS applications. So I'm really excited about the next video. I'll see you over there.